Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk a bit more about one of my favorite stories, Karen Russell's St. Lucy's Home for Girls Raised by Wolves. Um, I've really enjoyed reading your exercises where um, I see that a lot of you uh, are writing in kind of a fantasy or science fiction genre, so you're writing about things that couldn't happen in the real world. Um, and so what's kind of important about that and why this story is really good for talking about um, kind of stories that are not, you know, realism or about things that could really happen in the real world is that um, wherever your story is taking place, whether it's Mars or alternate universe or an ordinary kitchen, you still need to pin the world down. Your readers still need to know what's literally happening. They need to understand what each sentence means, where they are, who the characters are, what's in the world, and then they could put um, whatever meaning they want in your story. So there's a difference between being different and mysterious and having your readers be confused, right? So um, some people have this idea that a story could be about that it could be interpreted in any way and a reader can put whatever they want on it and that's not true that, that a story um, can have many meanings but not infinite meanings right and so you need to get that world as concrete as you can so that your readers can enjoy it so if if you understand what's happening in this story then you can um, you know, you can put a range of meanings on it. You can say that it's a coming of age story and it's about the process of growing up and that once you kind of learn how to be an adult, once you put shoes on your feet, you keep your mouth shut, you know how to ride a bike, you know how to golf, then you can never go back to being a kid again. You can never have that innocence again. Um, I've heard people say that it's a story about adapting to a different culture, about immigration, about moving to a new country where you learn certain customs and phrases and ways of being and that you forget where you came from, right? And so um, there's multiple meanings of the story. It's a beautiful story that can be interpreted in many ways, but uh, the writer does guide us really clearly and tell us um, literally what's happening in this world so that we can enjoy um, many different meanings. So um, she does that really well from the opening. Um, or from, first the title, right? St. Lucy's Home from Girls Raised by Wolves. So we, we already literally told what it is. Um, that's already a clue of what's happening. Then you have the different stages starting the story, right? Um, but when we get into the story, we're not given a bunch of information. We start with kind of images and feelings. At first, our path was all hair and snarl and floor thumping joy. We forgot the bark cautions of our mothers and fathers, all the promises we made to be civilized and lady like Cuth and Kemp. Um, and so we kind of have this world. We're, we're, we're not, we're, we're in the first person plural, the we voice. We're trying to figure out if these are girls or wolves, who these nuns are. Um, we're kind of just thrown into it. The sister is speaking Spanish, ay caramba, que barbaridad, right? Um, but as we're kind of immersed in the story, um, we are given information, right? We arrived at St. Lucy's that morning, part of a pack 15 strong, accompanied by a mousy, nervous, monk social worker. So we are kind of given by the end of the first page um, that I'm looking at, yours might be different, uh, some concrete information, right? As the scene goes on, our mothers and fathers were werewolves. We're given this big, pack this big chunk of information um, we get literally the backstory how it works that their girls their parents are wolves it skips a generation um, information that would have been too hard to absorb right away before we got the images and the feeling and wanted to be told information remember um, the reader going up the the mountain in a backpack and you want to give them just enough information to keep going not so much that they're weighed down um, so this does kind of build the world and tell you what's in it in a really careful, thoughtful way. We are given a lot of information. We, there's a lot of telling, but there is also starts with some showing of just feeling the emotions. Um, and the, the the most important parts in a story, or some, uh, my teacher Ethan Keenan talks about how uh, the most important parts are the first scene, the end of the first scene, and the end, right? And so um, the end of the first scene is really important. What happens there is kind of the tension that you see happening throughout the story. It's our narrator um, who is caught between her sister Jeanette, who's already trying to be really socialized, really, you know, switching over, forgetting her wolf ways, and then her sister Mirabella, who refuses to wear her name tag, who needs to be chased, and the sister says, stage one can be overstimulating. And so the tension of the whole story is our narrator, um, dead, I believe. Uh, they don't say her name very often. It's struggling to find, you know, a balance between her favor her sister who's favored for being super um, uh, quickly acclimating to the new culture, throwing it behind, going golfing, learning language, and Mirabella who, um, you know, wants her to lick her wound and is still this, this kind of wolf girl and can't socialize, right? Um, and Riley talked about point of view. When you think of point of view, um, 
if you think of who should tell the story, it's the person who suffers the most, right? And the one suffering the most, in a sense, is the one who's caught in the middle, who understands the appeal of both worlds and can't and realizes she can't just be part of what the old world, she has to make a choice, and the choice is to be part of the new world, and that means leaving behind her other sister. Um, and so the end of the first scene sets up all that tension that we see kind of unraveling throughout the story. Um, that and, and she doesn't explicitly say, I am caught between my two sisters, right? But we, we catch that throughout the story. Um, so just remember when you write your own stories that the end of the first scene really tells readers, really pushes them forward, tells them how to, how to read your story. Um, yeah, and then the story also does something really important. Um, it it switches from third person plural point of view to first person point of view. It's really hard to pull off, but it makes sense for this story because when it starts off, they are all a we. They're all this pack, right? They're this wolf girl group, and by the end of the story, um, Claudette is really her own eye. She's her own person, um, and she becomes separate. She becomes individual, and it's like the story of growing up, right? You're part of a group, part of a family, part of a, a group of siblings and then in the end you're kind of your own person and um she doesn't overdo it you know in the end she says I told my first line I'm home she doesn't stop and say I'm not really home you know this isn't my home anymore I don't belong with these wolves right um and it's funny but but or the moment where she sees the brother who becomes you know a dour children's author she doesn't say hey, I question the meaning of growing up and whether it's just better to be an innocent child roaming the earth and not being so clean and not being civilized and not wearing shoes. She just lets us feel that through the story. So she doesn't come off and tell you what the lesson is, what you're supposed to take away. She just develops really clear scenes with a clear arc um, of tension that she gets the story going um, from the first scene that she really kind of um, explodes and lets you feel that and lets you understand the world. Um, but she does have a pretty complicated world, but she pins it down through the sentences that each, that it's not mysterious or vague. She tells you everything. There's no, the real mystery is how she's going to navigate this world. It's not, um, you know, leaving you in the dark or leaving you confused about the rules of the world or what's happening. She lets that unfold um, really elegantly. And um, I think that's, that's all I'll leave you with is kind of um, the difference between, um, creating a rich, mysterious world and confusing your readers. And that can be um, when you're writing a different world that's not um, following the earth rules, you know. Um, it can be a tricky tension, but she really navigates it well. And it's something you can think about when you're creating mystery in your own worlds and your own writing is to make sure that the reader uh, has a sense of the world they're in and then giving them um, to explore the complexity of that world you've created. All right, thank you um, for listening. And I'm really enjoying reading all of your writings.